Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to share five or so editing tips and tricks for creating an effective YouTube thumbnail. So Google or YouTube does give you some size and resolution and other guidelines and tips that you can find on their help pages. But one basic one to know is they just recommend a 1280 by 720 resolution as of now. So you can go to File, New, and create a 1280 by 720 pixel image. And that can be your starting point for your thumbnail. What I like to do is just keep a PSD saved on my desktop in this size and resolution whenever I wanna make thumbnails. Now, another thing I've done is just dragged in all of my clips or photos and things that I want to have in this thumbnail. So you'll probably always have some sort of picture. Maybe it's a screenshot from your video Maybe it's a picture of an object or a person, but you'll have some sort of picture, hopefully. Um, or sometimes it's just text and logos and shapes. But I also have, for me personally, since I make Adobe tutorials, I like to have the logo of the specific software I'm working in. And in this case, since we're talking about YouTube thumbnails, I've decided to put the YouTube logo in there as well. And we'll also probably create a text layer later on. So one tip that you always want to be conscious of is placement and framing. So in this case, we have this vertical portrait shot photo. So I'm going to make it about the right size. And there's lots of different ways that you can think about framing things. You know, I could do lots of things. This is a really great photo to start with in the first place. But you could do something like really big right in the center, just like a face. You could do something like head and shoulders, maybe a little bit to the side leaving us some room over here if we want to put text and logos or other objects. So in my case, I think I'm going to go with this. This is a pretty standard one, just head and shoulders right here. And in this case, since the background is portrait and it doesn't extend all the way out, I'm going to cut out our person. So we have the quick selection tool in Photoshop is a pretty easy way to do cutouts when you have a good amount of contrast between the person and the background. So I'm going to do that. And even though she's got this curly hair, that's kind of probably difficult to select out. I can go to select and choose select and mask and just kind of brush in those refinements, press OK, and I'll get a pretty good selection. We're not trying to make the most masterpiece selection for some of the YouTube thumbnails because Another tip, remember, is a lot of times these thumbnails might be viewed this small, sometimes this small. I'm using the shortcuts Command plus and minus on my keyboard just to zoom in and out. And you can also press Command 1 just to get back to 100% size. You can always see what percentage you're in in the corner. So remember to think about what your thumbnail looks like, small or big. That's another tip. And also remember on YouTube, the bottom right corner of the thumbnail as of now has the little length of the video. So try not to put too important information right there. Keep things kind of open and, and legible, even in different sizes. So in this case, I'm just going to cut her out of the background by going to right click layer via copy. That's going to copy that selection onto a new layer. So if I hide the old one, you'll see we got a pretty good selection even with that curly hair. So I do kind of like that blue though. I feel like that really pops. And another tip that is going to come really in handy for you whenever you're making thumbnails is to remember your gradient tool. Your gradient tool is, is going to be great for making all kinds of colorful, eye-catching backgrounds. So in Photoshop, even in some of the new versions, they come built in with tons of new gradients, blues, purples, basics, and you can always create your own gradient too. So get familiar with the gradient tool. For example, I can pick this nice bluish light blue gradient. You can choose the type, so linear. I'm gonna make sure I'm working on a new layer here. So layer, new layer. I can do linear gradients. I can do radial gradients, bars. There's all kinds of cool gradients you can do, um, but you wanna be careful not to make it look almost too flat and I'll show you what I mean. So one common tip is to kind of draw the eye towards the center. And I can do that by making the 
middle kind of brighter and the background kind of darker. Or on a new layer, another new layer, I can even grab my brush tool or something, make it big enough and soft enough. You can always use the keyboard shortcuts, bracket, right and left bracket, and shift, right bracket and left bracket to quickly adjust brush sizes. And I can even kind of add some shading manually with brushes and maybe set that to overlay or a blending mode like overlay or maybe even just normal but on a much lower opacity. And you can already see how that it takes your flat thumbnail and kind of makes it a little bit more contrasted 3D kind of catches your eye in the center. Another tip to really improve uh, or try to get more pop out of your thumbnails is by using blending modes. So if I right click on any layer and go to blending modes, I always have the option to add drop shadows. So I can add drop shadows, add a little bit of shadow or contrast on a person. I can add outer glows even, add a little bit of glow around a person. And you can see this is a great way to take a flat image and make the different parts of it pop out. But we still have this open space that we've left right here to add our text. And you don't always need to add text and logos, but depending on what title of your video is or what's in the thumbnail. But a lot of times it can be useful, so I'm gonna show you how. So in this case, I've got the YouTube logo that I found online, just in a PNG. And I wanna add that because we're talking about YouTube logos. And you can see already it's starting to tell like a little bit of a story. And maybe I'm gonna add some text too. So I'm gonna grab my text tool, create a new text layer and name it like five thumbnail tips. So this is another really important part is placing and spacing. And you'll notice whenever you move stuff around in Photoshop, it shows you these guidelines. So making sure things are centered. Um, I can transform things to the, the right amount. And also if you select multiple layers together, so holding shift, you can move around layers in groups. And you can kind of imagine this whole shape as like a square. And we want to put it kind of right in the middle of this open area. And arrange things around so they're nice and balanced looking to the eye. Now, one thing about default text is you see it's kind of bland and it doesn't really pop out just like everything else. So I'm gonna make my text white instead. That's just a preference I have here. And I'm also gonna add blending modes on the text. So in this case, I might do a stroke. Maybe I'll even do a pretty thick stroke there. And on the YouTube logo, I'll add a little drop shadow just to make that pop out a little bit too. So you can already see with the blending modes what a difference it makes in, in them popping out. And just because my channel is a tutorial channel, uh, I want to add the Photoshop logo in there somewhere. This is one of the challenges of making thumbnails. You don't want to overcrowd things too much, but just in my case, for my subscribers, I want to kind of let them know this is a Photoshop tutorial because I make different kinds. So. I'll squeeze that in there and it's kind of like a little bit of a sacrifice. I'd rather keep it a little more simple, but these are the types of things that you're going to be thinking about when you're making thumbnails. So after you have all the information laid out, all the colors popped, you just want to maybe tweak sizes, balances, play around with different placements. Like what if she was on the left and everything else was on the right? You can play around with different ideas, but we've gone from our flat original images to a really eye-popping, clickable thumbnail in my opinion. So those are a handful of tips for editing thumbnails, just the way I go about it. And once you're done, you can always save this as a PNG and upload it to YouTube when you upload your videos. So if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the other videos on my channel for more editing tips and tricks. And subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you stay tuned for all of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.